G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for part 19 of our Super Mario Bros tutorial series in Construct 2. We're on the second last video and we're going to fix a ton of bugs before we do our flagpole in the last video, which will bring the series to a sad end, but all good things must come to an end if this video series is actually good. Anyway, what I want to do this video is I'm going to attack the bugs one by one. I'll give a quick demonstration of what the bug is, just to see if you are experiencing the bug as well and then actually fix the thing. Now it's not just going to be exclusive to bugs, there are missing features as well that I want to introduce and we're going to start off by looking at the very first bug right now. First bug is not actually a bug, it is a missing feature. When Mario falls off the world, he doesn't die and the level doesn't restart. So we're going to fix that right now. I want you to go into Construct and into your Mario event sheet. To implement this feature, I'm going to be adding the code to the Mario Miscellaneous section. So click down here on your Mario Miss group, press S for a sub-event, and we're going to check if Mario has fallen off the world. So Mario, compare Y, and we're going to check if his Y value is greater than the bottom of the layout, which will be the layout height, when we can find it, plus half of Mario's height, roughly, because that will include... Because Mario is measured by the middle, his origin point. So I'm going to add half the height to make sure he's fully disappeared in this world. The other thing we need to do is make sure this only triggers once when Mario dies. So I'm going to go to... Sorry, I just added a second condition, so press C. I'm going to go to System. And I'm going to go Trigger Once While True. And the last thing I'm going to do is make sure that Mario is active. Because otherwise, you know, if he's deactivated and goes down a tunnel or comes out of a tunnel, we don't want him dying accidentally. So I'm going to add another sub-event... Go to Mario, check the Boolean instance variables, and we're going to check for the isActive variable. Okay, what are we going to do when all this happens? We're going to call the dead function. So function, call function dead. Alright, and now if we run the game, and we run along, and hopefully we can die. Now you see Mario pops up like that. That's actually not what happens. Go away in the original game. So we need to quickly counteract that before we go too far. And the way we're going to counteract that is actually with a parameter in the dead function. Okay, so I want you to come up and find your function on dead. And we're going to add a sub-event to that. So click here, press S on your keyboard, go to function, and go to compare parameter. And we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to pass it a zero. And the zero is going to indicate that we just got hit by an enemy. Okay, so we're going to die normally and do the whole jump up and down thing. So all of these actions from wait 0.8 seconds down to restart layout are going to go inside that bad boy. Okay? Now this isn't if he falls off the world. Now to, to make it so when we fall off the world, I'm going to add an else to this statement here. So by pressing X, and I'm only going to include two actions, these two. So copy and paste those. And what I'm going to do is just change the wait time to be the total of all these guys, which is 3.5. So let's click here, type in 3.5, and let's test him out. Let's make sure we die on an enemy and the end of the world. So you'll see that didn't work, and I can tell you why in a second, but let's just jump off the world. Perfect, okay. The reason we didn't die when the Goomba hit us is because this little call here, we need to add the parameter, and just go done. Okay, so if you quickly do that, just edit that little call, add parameter zero, and make sure its value is zero, and thus this code should fire off. Why did I click that button? I don't know. Here we go. Go! <laughs> Try again. <laughs> done. Alright, next bug. Alright everybody, our next bug is when Mario dies at a high location, his sign behavior doesn't do what it's supposed to. Let's have a look. <laughs> that doesn't look very good, does it? Okay, so the way we're going to fix that is we're going to tweak the sign values on Mario. So if you've got Mario selected, down on the left, we have all the values for the sign. Now I'm going to increase these massively, okay? So the period now I used is 9, the offset is 1.6, and the magnitude is minus 500. Okay, and that should send Mario flying. Now, the issue is, if we just don't change any code, and we use this, you're going to see something. Yeah. Mario's up 
in the sky at that point. What actually we need to do now is when Mario dies, we need to bring him down first and then have the dying animation. So we're going to edit our dead function. Whoops. Where am I? Here. <laughs> I've just gone blind for a second there. Okie dokie. So when we activate the sign behavior, we're going to move Mario straight away and that sign behavior is going to react when he's in the middle of the screen. And we're going to adjust this number slightly. So I want to add the action first. I'm going to move Mario. So Mario set Y. Okay. And I want him to be self.y, so his current position, plus 450 pixels. And that's going to bring him down to where he dies. That action needs to be right there before we wait. And if you've got that, change this second wait to 2.5. And because we've changed that time, we need to change this time down here to 4, I guess. Yeah? That makes sense. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So if you're ready to go, hit run layout and let's hope that this works. So we die. And he falls off the screen now. He behaves the way we would expect him to. Okay, next bug, people. Alright, so the next bug, people have been telling me that Mario, when he's walking slowly, gets stuck in solid objects. Now I've turned the music off so it's not so annoying now. But to be honest, I can't replicate this bug, guys. I honestly cannot get Mario to get stuck in any solid object, whether I'm jumping, whether I'm ducking, whatever. I can't actually do it. So apologies, because it's a bug that I'm unaware of. If you can actually post a video of it and give me your project, I'll have a look into it, guys. So I'm actually going to move on to the next bug now. Okay, so the next bug is that when we get to the end of the level, okay, and we try to grab the flag, which we're obviously going to do in the next video, Mario's camera keeps going. And then we die. No. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new object. And we're probably going to use this in the next video. Excuse me. Come down to your misc folder. And we're going to create this new sprite. Okay. And he's going to be called camera disable. All right. Let's make him. I'm going to resize him 16 by 16. Just so he's the right size. And pick a dead ugly color. Which that looks about right to me. And let's get rid of that. So, what happens is Mario is going to run into this sprite. He's going to be invisible. We'll do that in a second. And then we are going to disable the camera so it doesn't move around anymore. Okay, now because Mario can't backtrack, you're not going to have to worry about re-enabling the camera or anything. So I'm going to make this the whole side of the level so Mario has to hit it. Okay. And the code itself, we're just going to put under, let's say, what's probably the best? The Mario one. Because it's got the camera. Okay. Blook. So, I'm going to add a sub-event to this guy. We're going to go camera disable, collision with Mario. Okay, so when Mario collides with the camera disable, we are going to go camera collisions to disable. Because that's what we're using to disable the camera. Okay, give it a quick go, as always. And the camera stops. Now that might not be the right position for it, it might have to go back a little bit, but I've demonstrated that it works, that's probably the most important part. Let's just quickly change its visibility to invisible, and that bug is dealt with. Alright, next bug, people. Alright, so the next bug revolves around the enemies and being able to walk while they're not on screen, or haven't been seen before. So for example, if I was to put this fella here, he's going to walk off the platform and the Goombas are going to walk around before I even see them. So. Let's quickly get to them. So they've already moved, and I betcha Cooper Troop is gone. He's walked off the platform before he even had the chance to come and say hello. So what we're going to do, we're going to change the code so that they don't react at all until you see them for the first time, okay? And once you've seen them, then they're allowed to move as much as they want, okay? So you need to be wary of that, is that once they're on the screen, they keep on moving. So let's do the Goomba first, and we're going to edit the code up here where we're simulating they press right, because that's their movement code, basically. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into a couple of bits. This is just one large event at the moment. I'm going to split it into two. So guys, I want you to press B, which is going to create a blank sub-event, and I'm going to drag this into there, and then drag these actions into here. All right, so get that set up first. Make sure event three is underneath event two. And we're going to keep going. We're going to add two more conditions. We need to quickly do a system for each Goomba. Otherwise, this isn't going to work properly. 
All right, and make sure that's the first condition inside your event. We're going to add a second condition, well, another new condition, I should say, which is Goomba. Just type in screen and is is on screen. All right. They're the only changes we need to make. We just need to go for every Goomba, if they're playing default and they're on the screen, simulate and turn them on. So let's press play. Make sure the Goombas don't move until we see them. And there you go. They didn't. Kill them. All right, now for the Koopa Trooper. He's the same fix, okay? So I'm going to scroll up to his movement code, which is right here. Let's create another blank event. Let's move these actions down. And let's add some conditions here. So first of all, the for each. If I can spell. For each Koopa. Add a second event, which is the Koopa Trooper on screen. And let's just make sure our Mr. Cooper Trooper does not die on us. Hopefully he doesn't. There he is. Alright, now that brings us to our next bug. So, the next bug is when we run into a Cooper Trooper while he's in a shell form, he should... we should be able to kick him. Basically. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit of modifying, but what I mean by that... What I mean by all of this, I'll demonstrate the bug. If I turn him into a shell, and then I run into it, Mario dies, which is not the actual behavior. You know what? I did forget about this, guys, and I thank everybody who reminded me about this one, too. So what we are going to do is we're going to modify this event to start with. This is the one where it hits Mario. Okay? We're going to add another condition to make sure the Koopa Trooper is walking around, because this is where the Koopa Trooper hits Mario. So add another condition with the C button, go to Cooper, and make sure he is playing his default, not dead, default animation. So that means we're not going to die when we hit him this time. Okay? Now we need to modify a little bit more code. So when you're ready, come down with me, and this is the event that we're going to modify slightly. Okay? Now right now we're checking if Mario's falling. We're actually going to stop that. We're going to do something a little bit different this time. I'm going to add another blank sub-event, guys. And it's going to add it down here. And I don't want it down here. I want it up here. So make sure, I'll just do that again. You drag this bad boy. Whoops. So it's just a plain line like that. Okay? I'm going to put the Mario is falling in there. I'm going to put this action in there. Okay? And what you're going to see is Mario running into him. And kicking him along. So the only time that we do this action, which is sending Mario back up in the air, is if he falls on top of him. If you just run into him, it should just kick him. Hopefully. Let's test it out and make sure she works before I keep going. Kick. Woo! And off she goes. Alright. No, next bug. Alright, so this next bug, everybody, is a, probably like a twofer. So right now, when Mario goes to headbutt the boxes... Whoops. I don't know how that's going too, but anyway. You'll see that Mario can headbutt boxes with just standing underneath it. And he can't go up small spaces. So I'll even demonstrate that with small Mario. It is really... It's impossible, actually, to get up those small gaps. Okay. This has to do with Mario's collision. So if I even put him over the top, you can see he wants to fall, but there's collision data that's stopping him doing that. So what we're going to do to, uh, to fix both of these things, we're going to modify Mario's collision. Now, I might be making more bugs for myself by doing this, but this is probably the nicest thing that I came up with. So if you double click on Mario, we need to get to his animations and more specifically his collision data. Okay, so what we're going to modify, we're going to bring in the sides of the collisions on most of these animations, guys. So this, we're going to bring in the right pixels, well, the right side in by one and the left side in by one, just like that. Okay, pause the video if you need to keep going, because I want to go through all these animations. The running one I'm not going to touch. I'll tell you why in a second. This one here, I'm going to bring in the left side by one, and I'm going to bring in the right side by three. One, two, three. All right, that's actually going to be the same size as the small idol now, roughly. Okay, now it's time for Big Mario. We're going to bring his pixels in one on the left, and one on the right. Like so. 
And then the running, this one's really weird because it's a big, big box, okay? So this one, I'm just going to type in the number. It Well, I'm not going to type this number in. It's 9. And this number is going to be 23. So I've only brought it in by 1. But I'm going to apply this collision box to each frame, okay? So it's all the same. So right-click and go apply to whole animation. Don't click that one. Okay, that way you've got the same collision data on all three frames there. And then finally, the big jumping. Okay, we're just going to bring him in one on each side as well. Like so. Okay, let's give that a test. Make sure it works. There's a gap there. There you go. I can actually fit now. And Mario will fall down. And big Mario will do the exact same. And he doesn't headbutt the box you see anymore. Alright, so those ones are knocked out of the park. I know a lot of people have been complaining about them, but they should hopefully be fixed. Let's just spawn. Next bug. One of the bugs you can see I'm doing right now. Anyway, next bug, people. You can see our next bug, people. It is Big Mario doesn't pick up a mushroom and gain points like he should. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to go to the items event sheet and we're going to do it here. So this is where we're handling when Mario picks up the mushroom, right up the top under the mushroom group, which is pretty logical. All right, We're checking that he's not big, so when he is big, he's just going to collect the, ma the mushroom for the points and play a sound. That's pretty much all it is. So we're basically going to be doing this again, but not in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But not grow Mario. Alright, so what I want to do, I'm going to add a sub blank event with the B key again. I'm going to drag this condition down, and we're going to shove the grow and everything else in there. Okay? So grow, create points, destroy. I want to then add an else here. So this is when Mario's small, this is going to be when Mario's big. So I'm going to copy these two actions right here and paste them. And I'm going to add one more action which is just playing the sound. So audio, play, at object, that's fine. And we're going to do power up and make sure that it is at the, on. let's just do it on Mario. Whoops, autosave apparently. Alright, drag it up. Press your play. And there you go. Now Big Mario can collect mushrooms and gather some points at the exact same time. Next bug. So the next bug revolves around the Big Mario and the pipe. Lots and lots and lots. So if I go down the pipe... Mario gets stuck. It's a pretty bad bug. Easy fix though, alright? The easy fix is we're just going to go right across to our underground. And you're going to drag that down one. Okay? That's the first step of this fix. The second fix is I am going to change... Sorry, it's under pipes. I'm going to change the movement total counter to 48. Okay? Press play. Give it a go. Make sure yours works as well. And to be honest, I think 48 is maybe a bit much. Let's just try 42. See how that goes. If that's too much, I'll probably reduce it again. Perfect. Okay. So, the next bug to do with pipes is that Mario animates while he runs down them. So, like, for example, if I run and then press down, he's going to be in a running animation the whole way down. Okay. So, to fix this, we are going to go down to our pipe entry code. Enter pipe. Mine's again collapse so I'm going to expand it. Alright, so for this one here people, what I want to do, this is when Mario goes down the pipe here or into the pipe here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if Mario is small and big first and then I'm going to set him to the appropriate small idle or big idle animation when he goes down the pipe. Okay, so I want you to add a sub event to this guy. We're going to go to Mario and we're going to go to Boolean and we're going to check if he's big. Now, if he is big, then we set his animation. So, Mario, set animation to big idle. And, oh, actually, no, play from beginning. That should be fine. Okay? I'm going to add an else, as you can imagine. So, that's big Mario. We're going to do the small Mario now. So, copy, paste, small idle. All right. Make sure you get this code down, and then come and test with me. I didn't even test that properly. Let me run first. Oh. 
Perfect. Now you probably see Mario's head popping out of the top there. I would just use the overlay layer to color over his head, okay? So I hope you know what I'm talking about there. Okay, so the next bug revolves around when you're inside the underground and you go in the exit pipe, the big Mario especially looks so dumb. Okie dokie. As you can see, I'm probably going to have to modify that other one too. So what we're going to have to do with that, if you're a big Mario and you go into the exit pipe, we're going to have to pull you down slightly, okay? And we're going to add a sub-event right here to do that. So I'm going to copy this code because I'm lazy and paste it. Make it a sub-event. Make sure it's a sub-event, people. So I grab that, drag it onto the conditions. Delete the action. That's useless. Okay. So I'm going to go to action Mario. Set Y to his self plus... Eight. That seemed to be the right number. So now when he goes in the pipe, it's going to pull him down slightly after it realigns him, which seems a bit silly, but we still need to align small Mario. We're just taking into account big Mario. Uh, you may have seen, we saw his back, his feet, and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to modify that slightly as well. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use an invisible object. Okay. So what I want you to do, we're going to create a brand new sprite. So we're going to right click on MISC. Insert a new object. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's going to be called Black Background. And anything we want to color over the top of Mario that's going to be black, we're going to use this guy. Okay, add him there. And we're going to resize him to 16 by 16 because that's a good number for this project. Make it black. And now we're ready to go. Now I want to make sure he is on the overlay layer because I want him to appear in front of Mario. I think mine is disabled. That's why it's just gone invisible. So I'm going to go to layers, tick, and I'm going to drag him down here and resize him. Now you'll see I've just lost the actual pipe. If I just right click, go Z order, center bottom, that black square is now behind the pipe. And it's going to look a lot better. The other thing I said I was going to do is color in the overlay for these bricks. So I'll do that right now, actually. So you'll see I've got the overlay here selected. I've got the pencil. I'm going to just paint that brick there and that brick there. All right, let me turn my level layer off, and you'll probably see what I've just done. So just added two little blocks on the edges. And hopefully that'll look a bit nicer. All right, let's give it a go. Much better. Now the floating at the end there is because of because of our value at the top. So I would try something a bit smaller. Fiddle with that value until you get it right. Okay. Next bug, everybody. Right, so the next bug, everybody, is actually around the music, and it's to do with this little action right here. Now I just want to quickly thank, and I apologize if I pronounce this incredibly wrong because I suck at pronunciations, but Ramtin Salanti or Soltani, sorry. He has done an enormous amount of work on this project, and I'm actually going to talk about that after we fix this bug. But the issue is that the only browser that supports this action is Chrome. So that really limits what we can do with it. So I have reworked the entire, um, how do I put this, I've reworked all the music systems, and it's actually a lot more flexible and means that we can have different music for the ground themes. So we're going to do that now. Before we do though, you are going to have to go to the description and download another file which has got new songs in it. So if you can go there, find the musicfast.zip file and download that. Alright, so what I've done to counteract this problem that only Chrome supports the increased playback speed is that I've just created new fast themes. I've just sped them up in Audacity and just saved them for you to use. So if you want to drag those files into your existing music folder in your project, you can probably guess what we're going to do next. We're going to get it into our project. So I'm going to jump over to project. I'm going to come down to music, right click on the bad boy and import some new music. So I'm just going to go click, control, click, control, click, control, click. All right. Open, import, Okay, so now we've got the fast themes into our game. Before we even do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our pipes event sheet. Oh, sorry, our world event sheet. I'm going to get to the pipes soon. And we're going to add a new global variable to this guy. All right, I know we've probably got enough already. I'm just going to add another one. And I'm going to call this guy underground. 
All right, leave it as a number, and zero is indicate that we're not underground. One is going to indicate that we are underground. Okay, and we're going to use this pretty wisely in just a moment. So if you jump back over to your main, to your level event sheet, or event sheet one, whatever you've called it, okay, we are going to modify the hell out of this. Now before we do, I'm going to add a new event. It's going to be a function, and we're going to call it, on function, sorry, play music. Alright, so you can probably guess what this bad boy is going to do. Now, what he is really going to do, this is per level. Just remember this, event sheet 1 only belongs to level 1 for me. Okay, so when I make level 2, I will have event sheet 2 or level 2 a sheet. And I can customize it the way I want the music to play on it. So we can have different music for different levels now. So that laziness I had in the music video is now dissipating and I'm fixing my problems now. What we're going to do is we're first of all going to check if we've got enough time to play the slow music. So I'm going to add a sub event, press S, go to system, compare variable, and we're going to check the world time. If he is greater than 100, we simply play the normal ground theme. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and paste it there. All right. Well, actually, I've already screwed up my own code. All right. I'm going to do a, another check here, guys. If the world time is going to be slow paced, we're now going to check another sub event. So press S, go to system, we go to compare variable, and we're going to check the underground variable. Now, if underground equals zero, it means we play the ground theme for this particular level. I'm going to put an else here, and if we are underground, we're going to change it to the underground theme. So, play the music if we are normal paced music, and we're not underground, play the normal theme. If we are underground, play the underground theme. I'm going to add an else to him now, and this is where we're going to play the fast music, okay? So, I'm going to copy and paste these two events and paste it under him, like that, and then I'm going to edit these two so they're the fast theme, like so. Okay, so this isn't going to do anything because I've just created a new function, okay, and I'm not using it anywhere. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete these actions up here. One, two, three. At any time we want the music changes or something happens, we are simply just going to call on play music. So start of layout, function, call the function, play music. Same thing here on warning ended, play music. Okay, so let's just make sure that works. I'll press play. I get the normal song. If you want to test it to make sure that the, um, the speed, the fast version works, I'm just going to change this world time value here to 99. Just make sure. Yep, okay, we get it. It works. So now we need to modify our code inside our pipes event sheet. So we finally got there. I mentioned that we were going to. Okay. So what I want you to do is scroll down to where we exit the pipe, which is here. Okay. So this is where we stop the music. Okay. This is down here where we play the underground theme, and this is where we play the ground theme. We're not going to do those events or actions anymore. Delete that one. Delete that one. Okay. Underneath, set collisions to disabled. We're going to set underground to 1. So go system, set value, underground, 1. Then we're going to call play music. Call fun. What am I doing? Function, call function, play music. And then we're going to do more or less the exact same thing on camera disable. So copy these two of actions, but change underground to 0. Okay. So with that done, let's test out Mr. Mario. Whoops, I need to get out of tile mode and turn my overlay off, otherwise it's going to really screw me up. All right, I'm about to go underground. That's good. Let's just go underground. Mmm. Let's make sure it still works. How good's that? All right. So final thing is just to enjoy the game, guys, because this is this video done. Thank you so much for watching. Now, before I go anywhere, I really, really, really want to acknowledge the work of Ramton. If you have a look at his comments in the last videos, he has done an incredible amount of work on this project, and he's probably gone even further than I have with the project, introducing fire flowers and 
you know what, a complete remake of the original level. So, down in the description of this video, I've linked a number of things for you guys. The main thing I've linked there is his document for this project that he's been making. And he's, he's outlined all the bugs that he's fixed, he's outlined all of the actions he's done, and I'll even show you. So this is part 7, or part 18, I said 17, 18, I'm an odd. There's Ramtin, and you've done such a fantastic job, mate. And I'll show you this document, guys. You, you're welcome to go, but I just want to acknowledge this. Here's his Google Doc document, which you can access his project, you can preview it online, and you can even run a benchmark. And he's gone to the detail of what he's added up on top of what I've done, all the fixes that he's in, imposed. So he's done a fantastic job. And I just want to quickly show you what it looks like. Because I thought it was fantastic. Hopefully it doesn't take too long on my network. So you're not staring at the screen. Look at this. How outstanding. So, look, well done there, Anton. I think you deserve a lot of credit for doing this project. It is amazing stuff, mate. And I hope you keep it up and finish it up. So, thank you for watching, everybody. I'm going to catch you in the next video, which is going to be our last. And it's been a wild ride, but it has to come to an end. I'll see you then, everybody. Ta-ta for now.